the thing that commentators got wrong is they existed in a bubble. They were talking to other MPs, they weren't talking to real people. And when the election was actually launched for the first time because of election coverage rules, Jeremy got much more balanced coverage in terms of the time. Um, for the first time they actually heard about our manifesto, which proved to be very popular. But the other important thing was this. We were really effective in using social media to get around what mainstream media was saying. And the stats show that people that get most of their political information from online and social media, mostly young people in fact, were far more likely to vote for us. I mean, what do you think about authenticity in politics now? Because some people have said there was something about Corbyn that just he looked more comfortable in his own skin than Theresa May did in the election. Is it fair to say that the sort of the old techniques of political communication have proved to be a bit futile at the moment and you basically have to be yourself? Maybe Donald Trump proves the same point, I don't know. Well, it would be ludicrous to compare Jeremy with Donald Trump. Donald Trump appeals to the direct opposite group of people, and Donald Trump appeals to fear, and Jeremy appeals to hope. But it is true that Jeremy is comfortable with himself. He knows what he believes. He doesn't have to read an opinion poll to tell him what he believes. And that's why he won the leadership of the Labour Party, not once, but twice. And that's why he was able to do so well in the general election. Interesting absence of evidence, though, that Britain has actually swung to the left. So would you accept that it's not the case Corbyn has, if you like, made a left-leaning argument to the British people and persuaded them that that is the way to go? Truth to tell, our manifesto was not some extremist left manifesto. Were we a Scandinavian country, our manifesto would have been seen as a quite middle of the road social democratic manifesto. What is true though is we've altered the debate. You've got Tory MPs talking about austerity, complaining about austerity, that never happened before. And you've got the Tory party look at issues of student finance. On a range of issues we have genuinely changed the nature of the debate. At the moment we have a government performance has been ragged over the last few months. Many people are saying it's, it's bizarre that the opposition, the official opposition, is most polls about one or two points ahead of this government. Are you, are you thinking, as we look at where Labour is now, this is great, we're ahead in the polls? Or are you thinking, yeah, actually, it, it ought to be 15 or 20 points ahead, given what the government's doing? The people complaining that we're not far enough ahead are the same people who said the Labour Party would be annihilated under the current leadership. I'm the person who over a year ago said that we would narrow the 20 point gap in the opinion polls and I said we'd do it within 12 months, in fact we did it within six months and I'm the person telling you that we are going to move ahead of this government steadily and surely as next year but unfolds. Yeah, it has been a year of kind of particularly vituperative dialogue and anger, um, and you've suffered enormously under that this year. Have you ever felt like oh, you want to just jack it all in? It's been difficult. I think it's 45% of the abusive tweets sent to MPs came to me. But not just difficult for me, difficult for my staff who have to open all the letters, because it's not just online, well, it's letters and so on. Do you, do you read the stuff or do you just... I don't you... read all of it, but my staff have to read it all. And my staff have to, to go online and look at Twitter because that's how we communicate with people. And it's been horrible for them. But I would say that I have had a lot of support as well from people in Hackney who've been really lovely. They, they could see I was under terrible attack, not just from online, but from mainstream media. Everywhere I went, they'd stop me and say, we think you're doing a really good job, you know, carry on. And that was very positive. I also got a lot of support nationally, cards and letters. So it was tough. But I got support. 2018. What are your hopes and fears for 2018 then? We are going to move decisively above the Tories in the opinion poll. Just as I said we would eliminate the gap, we're going to move decisively forward and I'm confident about that. And you know, the Tories are in a state, their negotiations are a shambles. Last week they couldn't even get their legislation to the House of Commons, so it may well be that 2018 will see a general election. Mm.
Diana, but thank you very much indeed. Thanks. <laughs>